Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to a very, very happy start of the next chapter of A Court of Wings and Ruin, written by Sarah J. Moss and read by yours truly, Free Water, with the exclamation point for that added emphasis. There is so much emphasis added here today of how excited I am that our boy is not dead. I will have to credit Tamlin. I still think, you know, he has a long way to go because he, you know, they're in, in a full turnaround area, he did end up doing a good thing. You know, he gave up a piece of himself to save that, which was like a long standing family feud between the two of them and their families. I'm hoping that means like the it's bygones now that their family feud that didn't really start with them, but it ended with them and not with either of their deaths. Uh, he's, I think Tamlin still has a long way to go after like trying to think back of what all had happened, the betrayals, the, uh, you know, just all this crazy stuff. Like, you, you, I, I guess you could claim on one side, like, oh, he did it to trick Highburn this entire time. But, uh, you know, there's still all the crappy things he had did, he had done uh, in between all that. And I think many might agree or, you know, agree or disagree. I think there's a lot of speculation into that scenario. Um, I just think that he did a good thing here, not necessarily making him a good person yet. Like Lucian, still they have a long way to go, and we ha we don't even know where Lucian is, so we still got a couple chapters left. Let's get back into it with chapter seventy-eight. Amongst the sprawling field of corpses and wounded, there was one body I wanted to bury. Only Nesta, Elaine, and I returned to that clearing once Azrael had given the all clear that the battle was well. And truly over. Letting rise out of my sight to wrangle our scattered armies, sort through the living and dead, and figure out some semblance of order was an effort in self control. I nearly begged Rise to come with us, so I didn't have to let go of his hand, which I had not stopped clutching since those moments I'd heard his beautiful, solid heartbeat echoing into his body once more. But this task, this farewell, I knew deep down. That it was only for my sisters and me. So I released Ryza's hand, kissing him once, twice, and left him in the war camp to help more haul a barely standing Cassian to the nearest healer. Nesta was watching them when I reached her, and Elaine at the tree lined outskirts. Had she done some healing, somehow, in those moments after after she had severed the king's head? Or had it been Cassian's immortal blood and Azrael's battlefield patching that had her already healed enough to stand? Even with the wing and the leg? Didn't ask my sister. She supplied no answer as she took the water bucket dangling from Elaine's still bloody hands, and I followed them both through the trees. The King of Highburn's corpse lay in the clearing, crows already picking at it. Nesta spat on it before we approached our father. The crows barely scattered in time. The screams and moaning of the wounded was a distant wall of sound. Another world away from the sun-dappled clearing. From the blood still fresh on the moss and grass. I blocked out the coppery tang of it. Cassian's blood. The king's blood. Nesta's blood. Only our father had not bled. He hadn't been given the chance to and through whatever small mercy of the mother, the crows hadn't started on him. Elaine quietly washed his face, combed out his hair and beard, straightened his clothes. She found flowers somewhere. She laid them at his head, on his chest. We stared down at him in silence. I love you, Elaine whispered, voice breaking. Nesta said nothing, face unreadable, there were such shadows in her eyes I had not told her what I had seen. I had let them tell me what they wanted. Elaine breathed. Should we say a prayer? We did not have such things in the human world. 
I remembered. My sisters had no prayers to offer him. But in Prithian... Mother holds you, I whispered, reciting words I had not heard since that day under the mountain. May you pass through the gates. May you smell that immortal land of milk and honey. Flame ignited at my finger fingertips. All I could muster. All that was left. Fear no evil. Feel no pain. My mouth trembled as I breathed. May you enter eternity. Fear slid down Elaine's pallid cheeks as she adjusted an errant flower on her father's chest, white petaled and delicate, and then backed away to my side with a nod. Nesta's face did not shift as I sent that fire to ignite our father's body. He was ash on the wind in a matter of moments. We stared at the burned slab of earth for long minutes, the sun shifting overhead. Steps crunched on the grass behind us. Nesta world, but... Lucian. It was Lucian. Lucian, haggard and bloody, panting for breath as if he'd run from the shore. His gaze settled on Elaine, and he sagged a little. But Elaine only wrapped her arms around herself and remained at my side. Are you hurt? He asked, coming toward us, spying the blood of speckling Elaine's hands. He halted, short, as he noticed the King of Hybern's decapitated head on the other side of the clearing. Nesta was still showered with his blood. I'm fine. Elaine said quietly, <clears throat> excuse me, and then asked, noticing the gore on him, the torn clothes and still bloodied weapons. Are you? Well, I never want to fight in another battle as long as I live, but yes, I'm in one piece. A faint smile bloomed on Elaine's lips, but Lucia no noticed the scorched pass a patch of grass behind us and said, I heard what happened? I'm sorry for your loss. All of you. I just strode to him and threw my arms around his neck, even if it wasn't the embrace he was hoping for. Thank you for coming. With the battle, I mean. I've got one hell of a story to tell you, he said, squeezing me tightly. And don't be surprised if Vasa corners you as soon as the ships are sorted and the sun sets. Is she really? Yes, but your father, ever the negotiator. A sad, small smile toward the burnt grass. He managed to cut a deal with Vasa's keeper to come here. Temporarily, but better than nothing. But yes, queen by night, firebird by day. He blew out a breath. Nasty curse. The human queens are still out there, I said. Maybe I'd hunt them down. Not for long. Not if Vasa has anything to do with it. You sound like an acolyte. Lucian blushed, glancing at Elaine. She's got a foul temper and a fouler mouth. He cut me a wry look. You'll get along just fine. I nudged him in the ribs. But Lucian again looked at that singed grass, and his blood-splattered face turned solemn. He was a good man, he said. He loved you all, very much. I nodded, unable to form the words, the thoughts. Nesta didn't so much as blink to indicate she had heard. Elaine just wrapped her arms tighter around herself, a few more tears streaking free. I spared Lucian the torment of debating whether to touch her, and linked my arm through his as I began to walk away, letting my sisters decide to follow or remain. If they wanted a moment alone with that burnt grass. Elaine came. Nesta stayed. Elaine fell into step beside me, peering at Lucian. He noticed it. I heard you made the killing blow, he said. Elaine studied the trees ahead. Nesta did. I just stabbed him. Lucian seemed to fumble for a response, but I said to him, So where now? Off with Vasa? I wondered if he'd heard of Tamlin's role, the help he'd given us. A look at my friend showed me he had. Someone, perhaps my mate, had informed him. Lucian shrugged. First here, to help. Then, another glance at Elaine. Who knows? I nudged Elaine, who blinked at me then blurted, 
you could come to Valaris. He saw all of it, but nodded graciously. It would be my pleasure. As we strode back to the camp, Lucian told us of his time away, how he'd hunted for Vasa, how he'd found her already with my father, an army marching westward, how Miriam and Drakan had found them on their own journey to help us. I was still mulling over all he said when I slipped into my tent to finally change out of my leathers, leaving him and Elaine to go find a place to wash up and talk, perhaps. But as I strode through the flaps, sound greeted me within, talking. Many voices, one of them belonging to my mate. I got one step inside and knew I wouldn't be changing my clothes anytime soon. For seated in a chair before the brazier was Prince Drakan, Rai's sprawled and still bloody on the cushions across from him, and on the pillows beside Rai sat a lovely female, her dark hair tumbling down her back in luscious curls, already smiling at me, Miriam. And that, my friends, was the end of chapter 78. We are getting ever so closer, ever, ever so close to the end of this book y'all and it has been such an insane ride i i'm gonna keep saying it probably for these next few chapters i can only imagine like where do we go from here what where do we come from where do we go you know the cotton eye joe kind of reference right there but man i it, i'm holding the book to my chest right now i see i see why people do that now they're like oh you know <laughs> I'm cl I'm literally clutching it because what do I do when I set it down? I got to I got to go to work now. I got to do my work and I'll get to read tomorrow, but until then I'm going to be thinking about it. So it's going to be rough. Y'all, I appreciate all the love and support on this channel. We'll we'll get one more mushy gushy supporty thank you from me at the end of the book. So we'll 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 push we'll start there. Leave it at that. I just want y'all to stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and I will see you in the next chapter.